So here we have 10.3 synthetic division. It says use synthetic division to find the quotient and remainder um, when 6x plus 2 minus x cubed is divided by x plus 3. Okay. So the first thing I need to know is I need to know what the zero is that corresponds to um, x plus 3. Okay. So if you have x plus 3, that means the zero, um, sometimes they call it k, or sometimes you'll see it called c, is going to be the opposite sign of this, which is negative 3. Okay. Now, we'll just call this the zero. I already have the word zero right there. So remember, this is your divisor, what you're dividing by, or your factor. Okay, that's what this is. We'll talk about the factor part in another topic. Now, the rest of the function, this here, okay, um, I have to have it in descending order. which means I need to start with the variable with the highest exponent first. So this term has to come next. Then I would have to put the term with the squares in it. And if you notice, I don't have an x squared term. So I have to fill in the blank and put plus zero x squared. Then I could put my x terms, positive six x, and then I could put my constants, positive two. So not only does it have to be in descending order, but it also has to contain missing terms. And how do you contain the missing terms? All you do is fill it in with the zero. Okay, so now that we have that, we can set up for the synthetic division. Now for the setup and synthetic division, they call it synthetic division because you're only going to use the numbers and the coefficients the, and not the variables at all. It's like you make the variables disappear, you do all the work without them, and then you put the variables back in. And that's why it's called synthetic division because the actual division, if you do long division, you keep the variables in there and you work with them, okay? So this is just like a quick way to divide, um, but it does have its own process, okay? So the first thing we need to do is we need to set it up so that you have your K or your C, whatever you call it there, the zero, okay? And then you have the coefficients of your polynomial there, okay? So for my particular problem, uh, my k value is negative 3. And then my coefficients are a negative 1, a 0 for the missing x squared, a positive 6, and a positive 2. And then this is how it goes from here. And I'm so glad that this is a video because if it were just a piece of paper, it'd be really hard to be explaining what's happening. Okay? What's happening is the first term will always come down exactly the way it is. That first number will always come down. Everything that is down here will always get multiplied by what is up there. Every single thing. Okay? So once you brought this down, now that number needs to be multiplied here by this number. And the results will go inside as you move along. So negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. And then you combine these. 0 plus 3 is 3. Again, anything that comes down here has to get multiplied by that negative 3, and the result goes on top of the line in the next spot. So 6 minus 9 is actually a negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9, and 2 plus 9 is an 11. I always box the last number because this is your remainder. Okay, these numbers will give you the quotient, but like I said earlier, you took all the variables out, you have to put the variables back in. 
okay? So, D is the divisor. And we already know what that is. That is um, the x plus 3. That is what I was supposed to be dividing by. But instead of dividing by that, I just used the 0 or the k value of this divisor. And I just used the negative 3 in this synthetic division. But this is the actual divisor. Okay. So when I write my answer, this is what's going to be in that denominator. Now, Alex already everything where it wants it just has a blank here and a blank there and you have to fill it in so I already know what my remainder is my remainder is 11 and so that 11 is what would be up here in the numerator okay only thing I need left is my quotient but my quotient does have to have variables and the way we determine those is kind of going backwards so we know that the last term is always your constant and then the next term would be your x's, and then the next term would be your x squareds. And if I had more numbers down here, the next term would be my x cubes, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, so on and so forth. But I only have three terms, I only have these. So when I go to write my quotient, it's going to be negative one x squared, a positive three x, and a negative three. Okay, so I'm just taking this, and putting it into its variable form. Now for the answer, in um, Alex, it's going to be written like this. So they're already gonna have the divisor written out for you. All you have to do is type in the 11 and type in the negative x squared plus three x minus three, and that's it, okay? Now, not every single problem is going to make you put it in descending order because some of them will already be in descending order. That's great, but double check that it is. Some of them won't have any terms. Again, that's great, but be sure, okay? Sometimes you get a remainder of zero, and that's okay too. Put a zero here. Whatever number you get in that last entry, that box it because that is your remainder and that is what will go on top of the fraction. You do have to put other numbers down here back into variable forms and start with the constant, the x's, x squared, x cubes, however far you have to go. Sometimes you only have two numbers there so you're only going to have 3x minus 3. Sometimes you have another number here, so you have some x cubes minus x squared plus 3x minus 3. Okay, so every problem is going to be different. Make sure you work them out and then you fill it in accordingly.